Shall we clap for Jesus? You may be seated. I want to continue with the message I shared on Sunday titled, What You Receive Is What You Become. If you receive money today, I think you can't even talk. Clothes will be the one talking. The type of vehicle that will be driving is the one who will be talking. You receive money, the character of money will be seen through the material that you, are, you know you are going to buy. So, Jesus is the gift from God. Because the world was not in order. There was no hope for the children of God. No direction. So he came as a gift to the world. Make no mistake, it is not everyone in the world who accepted Jesus, even today. There are others who are using the history of Jesus as the way to justify their wrong. There are others who are using the history of the Bible. There's nothing wrong. What is wrong is that if you haven't received him as a gift, the light of your life, then something is wrong. People of God, this is a question always, you know, keep on clicking in my mind. If you know someone is not educated, you can even tell and see the type of life that person will be living. Go to the village. And when you become educated, everything will be like you have never been to the village, even if you are from the village. I want to bring this to your attention so that you, you get the, 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 the clear picture. Our mothers and fathers can agree with me. They give birth to us. From the one we grew up from that house. They know us from the one they were backing us on their back. Feeding us. Blessed feeding us. Today we have become what we have become. We are calling two things. The surname of your father and your career. They will call you Professor Mlenga, Dr. Mlenga. What does it mean to you? Simply means Mlenga is educated. There is no way you can call me a professor. People who knows me will start asking you questions. From where? We not even my own family members will ask you, why are you calling him a professor? This man is not educated. Are you there? So, if you start calling me Professor Mlenga, Dr. Mlenga, you are telling the world that our son is educated. And if you say our son is educated, which field? There are people who knows me from university. There are people who knows me from primary to secondary. Even when you are on TV, you are talking, there will be some people will be confirming that yes, he was, you know, a captain. He was the head boy. He was this. He was that. Meaning, you are no longer living that life of your father who was a fisherman or a hunter. But you are calling his surname. But the character of life is educated. Come on, I'm talking to you. I want to bring this to you, you know, so that you can understand the, the point I want to raise. Why is it that today we are using the history without the character that brought the history to life? Why? Why are we confessing what we have not received from him? Because when you become a child of God, the first thing that you receive from him, it is the gift of life. That is Holy Spirit in you. 
Because Jesus came to put everything in order. When you receive that gift from God Almighty, your character will change. Everything will be completely changed. Why? Something has come, you know, I mean, uh, taken over your life. I was listening to one brother who is now a, 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 a professional footballer. When he was, you know, confessing that he, I was there in the village hunting, you know, these small, small animals. What the, he explained a lot of things. Then I looked at him and said, oh God. Now, today you can't even say that this man was a hunter. Football has entered his life. He cannot just confess that I was a hunter and he's still hunting. No. He's saying I was a hunter because he has stopped. He's now playing what? Football. And football has changed his life completely. Now I'm talking about believers. Jesus was a gift and he is a gift to everyone. But we are calling these two things inside and outside. Number one, when you receive the gift that is Jesus, the Spirit of God will enter you. Simply means you are calling the nature of God. The light of life is in you now. Apart from that, you too will be seen as a human being born from that house. Not only that, they know your record before you become a child of God. They will start now comparing you to your former life and the life that you are living now. And what can make people to believe that, yes, this brother or this woman truly is a child of God. It is the character of the Holy Spirit in you. Through Jesus, the hope of life. The good example is here. Let's go to Acts chapter 22. Because immediately you receive Jesus, you'll be talking to him. He'll be guiding your life. Make no mistake, human beings, you know sometimes they argue with the word of God according to what they know that this is the way. Like Peter, in the same book, Acts 10, verse 10, if you read that one, you remember when Peter was praying, something, you know, came from heaven and God said, kill and eat. He said, I cannot eat something and cream. He was arguing with the Holy Spirit. According to his thinking and his belief and what he knew about the history of the Bible, he cannot eat anything and cream. Which is true according to what he was taught. But God said, don't go anything and clean. When God said, kill and eat, you must obey that instruction. As he was contemplating before we started reading this one, he, he came back, you know he was taken in a trance. Then he came back. He was thinking about that vision. Listen to this now, people of God. The reason why every child of God must not trust his mind or the history. Because what brought the history of the Bible is the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit of God can talk by then, using human beings like you, even today, he can use you. You may not write the Bible for guidance, direction, for the salvation of your soul. Even in business, when you are investing, don't just invest because you have money. The Spirit of God is there to tell you if it is a proper business. Peter was thinking about this. Read John, I mean, Acts 10, 10. You go down. The Spirit of God ministered to him. He said what? There are people outside. They are looking for you. It's me. Do not hesitate. Follow them. Peter obeyed because the gift of life was now in him. He realized that, oh, the vision that I saw, it came in parable. Now, this is the result. Let's go to the book of the same book that I quoted. We start from verse 17. Acts chapter 22, verse 17. This is now Apostle Paul. 
Listen to this and you learn a lesson. There is no way you can serve God without his gift in you. And that gift is Jesus in you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You can go to church every Sunday. You can be, you know, do whatever you are doing. You can participate to every activity inside the church. But without this light in you, you don't know what you are doing. You don't know where you are going. You may even deny God. Listen to this. When I returned to Jerusalem and I was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance. That is vision. This is Paul now. He became a believer. Remember that Paul was against the church. He was beating the church, persecuting the church. But when he received this gift from God Almighty, he became like Jesus himself. He said, when I was praying, he returned to Jerusalem and he was praying in the temple. He was taken in a trance. That is vision. Who was talking to him? Listen to this now. This is verse 18. And I saw the Lord speaking to me. Quick, he said, leave Jerusalem immediately. Because the people here will not accept your testimony about me. He saw Jesus talking to him. I mean, Paul, leave Jerusalem immediately. Because the people here will not accept your testimony about me. If Paul, who was so before, did not hear from Jesus and see Jesus, and before I go there, let me ask you this question. Are you telling me that before Paul became an apostle, the Bible was not there? Hmm? I'm talking to you, children of God. Are you telling me that before he became an apostle, the Bible was not there? Even preachers were there. Apostles were there. They were preaching the word, quoting the same Bible. And Pete, I mean, Saul was busy persecuting them, killing them, taking them to prison. If it is not Jesus, who came down as a gift to him for him to, to be changed from that life of a persecutor into an apostle? Even when you go to Paul to preach the word, he will arrest you. He will do what? He will arrest you. Now listen to this. This is verse 19. Lord, he replied, these people know that I went from one synagogue to another to imprison and beat those who believe in you. This is now Paul, answered to the Lord. 20. And when the blood of your Messiah, Stephen, was shed, I stood there giving my approval and guiding their clothes of those who were killing him. He was even there when the Messiah of faith, that is Stephen, the apostle of God, so was there to make sure that Stephen is killed as a supervisor. But what you make now Paul to be an apostle if the gift of life is not in him? Because the record is there for him as a bad person. Remember where I started from. I was talking about the way our mother gave birth to us. They know us from the one up to where we are. You become a professor. You came from that house where your father is a shoemaker. He's a hunter. He's a security guard. They give birth to you. You become a doctor. It doesn't mean that since your father is a shoemaker, you too will be a shoemaker. No. When something came upon your life in form of a career, you'll be a breadwinner in that family. Even that small house where your father and your mom is there, it is you who are going to build now a big what? House. Because everything has changed. You are a professor. You are a manager. Are you going to continue living hand to mouth? The answer is no. I'm calling these two side by side so that we, 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 our understanding will be very easy. Now, when you become a child of God, you are not going to live the same life that you were living before. Because something new has come upon your life from heaven. 
to guide you, direct you, command you, protect you, and read you. So that you know what you are doing. Sometimes when you are talking to people, they will represent their problem and say, don't worry, you are going to do it. You are going to sell this one. But I've been doing this one who come, that one who come and say, don't worry. The light people is on the way. You are not just say, or speaking your mind. The Spirit of God is the one ministering to you. If you say what is not from the Holy Spirit, it will never come to pass. Are you there? Ah, I hope you are listening to me. Listen to this now. Verse 21. Then the Lord said to me, Go, I will send you far away into the Gentiles. I will send you away far. Meaning you leave this area. You will start from there. Let them start hearing from there. From the Gentiles. There they will come to know that I have called you to be my servant. Children of God. There is no way you can depend on the history of the Bible without Jesus himself. Leading the Bible is good, but without understanding of the Bible, it's not good. Because you finish leading, you go back to the same life. There is no way a professor can go back to that life where the father was just a, a fisherman or a hunter or a shoemaker. No, he's a professor now. He will carry everything to the mother, to the father, to show them that you give birth to me. I am no longer at that level where you are. This is why even if your father, your mother, they are not, you know, true Christians, honor them and respect them. But don't follow their way. Follow the way of Christ. Stop calling your mother and your father witches and wizards. No, they give birth to you. If you become the light, you are going to shine in that family. It is you to kill what? Witchcraft. Are you there, people of God? It's because of time. I think we can go to Acts 13, verse 46 as well, so that you know what I'm talking about. Because of time, let's just go down to 47. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles that will make, bring salvation into the hands of the earth. I will end there. I have made you what? The light. Christianity is not just a mere confession. Our mission as believers is to bring people to Christ. And to let everyone around us be part of Christ. There is no way you can say you are a child of God and you are living the same life. There is no way you can say I am a professor. I work in that bank. I work in that university. You are still hunting or fishing. It's a taboo. If you say you are a teacher, you are no longer, you know, making shoes. You leave that shoe making jobs. You are now a teacher. You are writing on the board. And people who you know who attest to that, yes, he's now a teacher. But why are we not, you know, confessing what, you know, we are not? Because what you receive is what you become. If my brother here is my coach, and I pay attention to him, I'll be the best prayer. Because of what I'm receiving from him. So there's no way you can live above your weakness without Jesus. It is Jesus who can make you to live above your weakness. You know weakness? Weakness could be anger. Weakness could be quick tempered. Stealing. Unforgiveness. That is your weakness. But when the gift of life came upon your life, you become like Jesus. That weakness will no longer be active in you. Because you are a changed person. You are being transformed from that old life to a new life. But why are we confessing that we live with Christ, but we are living the same life? Fighting, quarreling, drinking, smoking, stealing, 
when Saul encountered Jesus, he became poor. He became what? Poor. What made him to become poor? It's Jesus. What will make you to be a child of God? It's not because you confess it with your mouth. Jesus has to be inside you and be part of your life. He will change you from the name that they know, the character that they know. He will give you his own character. When you are talking, people will say, ah, ah, we know this brother, we know the father, and we know, but you don't know my destiny. You don't know what has come upon my life. Yes, you know me. What you receive is what you become. No one, has, you know, born to... I mean, you come from that family, you just, oh, now you are a woman, now you are a professor. Sometimes I have a lot of motivation, I have a lot of president, I have a lawyer, I have a doctor, I have a lot of people, I have a lot of people. I have a lot of people, 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 I have a lot of people. The Spirit of God is inside him. Tell him that you are a pilot. So what you receive is what you, you become. Apostle Paul received Jesus and he possessed Jesus. So you too, if you say you are a believer, who do you believe? What have you received from what you are confessing? Are you really calling Jesus? You can, sometimes you, can, you, you may not even talk, but the character will be the one to talk. I am anointed. Ah, ah, don't talk. Let the anointing do what? Talk. I am a prophet. Let the collector talk. Touch not. They will touch you. It is only the anointing that can restrict them not to touch you. Paul was guided by Jesus. Leave Jerusalem. These people will not accept my testimony. Meaning they know your collector. Peter was there. Here is a vision came upon his life. He argued with God to say, I cannot kill what is unclean and eat. And yet the spirit of God was ministering to him. Not until when he woke up from that vision. And three men were outside waiting for him. He was thinking about the vision. Then the spirit of God said, please, three men are waiting for you outside there. If I ask you this question, who was talking to Peter? Because Peter, the Bible never said uh, a man ran to Peter that, oh, there are people outside. No. The Bible says that the Spirit of God ministered to him that three men are waiting for you outside. It is me who sent them to you. See, the way spiritual men live their life. See, the way spiritual Women live their lives. When Paul was ministering, the Bible says that God feared women were incited by the Jewish leaders. Make no mistake, even if you are a believer and you are not listening to the Holy Spirit, religious people can mislead you. The way they mislead the woman, I mean the women, who were God feared women. They were feared that if these women followed Paul, the whole entire city would believe in this man's teachings. Let me end there. Thank you. God bless you.